Okay, hello and welcome to this session where I am joined by Tanya Tracy, who's the CEO of GAIN, Girls Are Investors, and really excited to talk to Tanya because we're going to talk about girls in finance and, and more broadly than that, the much bigger topic about gender equality and, and what is it, this fantastic uh, initiative that Tanya is in charge of and what she does and opportunities on the back of that. Um, Tanya herself worked at JP Morgan for over 12 years. She also worked at Nomura, the CFA, before being involved now uh, with GAIN. So she's done some tremendous things, but really thankful to have uh, some time with her to ask her a bit about her background first. So if we can kick it off there. But Tanya, pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much for having me, Anthony. It's great to be here. Yeah, so your, your, your background then. I, I just said to you offline, I was just looking... To spying on your your LinkedIn and I was like wow what an incredible resume and uh, maybe you could take me back to even before your professional working life what was your childhood where did you grow up where are you from did you have an idea about your career because you know you spent a long time at JP Nomura and so on so mm. where did it start for you? Um, yeah so I grew up in Oxfordshire went to school in Oxford and um I was not a mathsy, sciencey person at all. So finance was never really on my radar. Um, I was I did A levels in English, history, and German. Uh, I was very much on the art side, and I went on to study German at UCL. Um, and really, the first inkling I had that finance was where I wanted to be was when I was. In the sixth form and I did an insight day, an insight into the city day and we trooped up, it was about 20 of us and had a tour around the city and at that time we uh, went into life, like we you know, had the trading centre and, and the whole thing just blew me away, the sort of the buzz of it was, I thought this is where I want to be, but I thought how on earth am I going to get here because I'm not doing anything related to finance. Anyway, so um, I finished university and then got um, sort of I didn't go through the graduate program or anything like that, but I managed to sort of a few months after I graduated, sort of get in by the back door, if you like, and I got in a desk assistant position on the syndicate desk in the equities department. So I was in global markets and um, and from there, and I was literally running roadshows. So when you do an initial public offering or you do a secondary offering, the company um, goes round and meets all the investors around the world. And that is what I organise. I often accompany the companies as well, um, sat in on their investor meetings and did everything. So it was a lovely first job and it led on to other things. And I sort of moved into investor relations advisory and then corporate broking. Um, and yes, I was there for quite a long time. And I had three children while I was there. And then after my third, I decided that I needed to stop for a bit because I had three children under five and I was frankly exhausted. Um, so I did. I stopped for a bit and then had a few years off. And then I came back and I started working at Nomura. Um, so Japanese bank this time um, and doing a very similar thing. And then I was there until they closed their European equities business and decided to focus on the Japanese and Asian side. Um, and yes, and then I went to the CFA, ran, I got very interested in diversity inclusion, I guess because of my personal experience as a woman in a very male dominated environment. Um, but also um, I was developing an interest in it because I had two daughters and they were coming up at that point to teenage years. And I was seeing some of the challenges that they were facing. And, you know, a lot of the careers, experiences they were getting, were quite that there was a lot of push into STEM, but there wasn't much push into finance. So there was very much focus on engineering and science, but not on the maths and finance side. So when the gain opportunity came about, then it really ticked a number of boxes for me, and I thought this is this is what I want to do. So um, so yes, again, had been set up for um, we, three years ago, and so I came on board two and a half years ago to run the charity on a day to day basis. So it was set up by women in the industry. Um, and so, yeah, who are all still on the trustee board and incredibly supportive. Yeah, amazing to hear um, the life floor is what kind of sparked it to life for you. I, 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 I remember when I mean, I'd started in the city and 2006 and there were some some of the old traders from the floor were still around from the transition onto screens but they were some lively characters 
to put yeah. it mildly <laughs> and and you I mean it looks you work through like the what the IPO boom in the late 90s and yeah. the dot-com era in, in IB so um what was that experience like then but presumably it was almost entirely male at that point in time would that be right yeah it was very male um and it, the, I was sitting on the trading floor and it was very noisy you know at that point people didn't call each other. They would literally stand up and yell. And I remember the first few weeks, months of being there, being utterly terrified most of the time and you know, having to make a decision quite early on. You're either gonna to have to toughen up a bit or you're not gonna make it sort of thing. And so I decided to keep trying with it. And, but it was a very reward, it was a growing business. So JP Morgan at the time, Extras was pretty small and it really grew, grew, grew. And now is the enormous you know, yeah, department that it is. And, um, you're right, I was there in the mid 90s and it was dot com boom. And, you know, I was traveling around the world with these incredibly exciting organizations and uh, meeting some fascinating people. I mean, that's the beauty of that industry is that you are surrounded by incredibly interesting, incredibly bright people. Um, and, you know, there is a buzz. There was a real buzz and it was great fun. Mm. Do, do you did you feel or do you feel as a, as a woman in that environment that you need to do like rightly or wrongly that you need to do more than your male counterpart of a similar level or within the same team for example does that exist I think there is an element of you having to prove yourself mm. um but you know in that environment everybody works hard you know mm. everybody is expected to work hard and put in the hours um, and you all do because frankly everybody's doing it around you it's not like every, you know, people are working at different speeds or anything so um, it's very pressured there's a lot of shouting you know it's, it's a lot of you know but it is incredibly buzzy and it was I think it's settled down a lot now it wasn't quite what it is then but it was then but yeah it was, it was great fun and it was good I think the time where things change is when you get married and you have children start having children right. and then you know responsibilities lie elsewhere and having to put in the hours that you did have to put in became more problematic and you know I would often be traveling at the drop of a hat you know they would say right you're going to Geneva this afternoon you, you simply can't do that when you've got children and you've got other responsibilities so mm. it was fantastic early on but it became more and more difficult when you had other responsibilities. So, so, the, so the solution in that scenario would be to pivot in your career to a different division within a bank? Or is it, is it, are we expecting too much for the bank to just change? Like you said, you're basically working for a client and if they need something, you have to deliver that. And yeah. If there's that balancing act where you can't be at these places that are dropping the hat anymore, is it a case of then of just changing role is that right yeah that I mean you know when I think back at the hindsight that's mm. probably what I should have done but I was I guess I really enjoyed what I did and I was trying yeah. desperately to keep it going and I think they were also trying to help me do that and they mm. I went down to four days a week and I think right. I was the first person on the on the floor to be able to do that at that point that was really unusual I had a fantastically supportive boss but what it actually had affect me, and this was sort of new for everybody at the time, but what it actually meant was you did five days in four. And so it became <laughs> even more pressured. <laughs> but, um, you know, you, it, hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Um, yeah. I think, yes, I could have moved internally, but at the end I just carried on. And there was movement, you know, we got moved into ECM and things like that. So mm. things were changing anyway. Mm. So, so you mentioned there um, two kind of teenage daughters and, and obviously now in your role, you, you interact with uh, young women all of the time. Mm -hmm. Is there is there any kind of reoccurring theme in those interactions you have with the sort of 15 to 21 year olds female demographic? Like yes. in terms of reservations that they might have in terms of a lot of the, the female students I work with in our programs, um, I would say the issue of kind of imposter syndrome or lack of confidence, it seems more apparent often in women than men. Is that, is that a, a true yeah. or consistent thing that you see as well? I think that's right. Um, 
And, you know, there is that stat about young women not applying for a job unless they meet a minimum of 95% of the criteria, mm -hmm. whereas if men see a job advert, they, as long as they meet 50%, they think, great, I've got a fantastic chance. So there is a slightly different approach. Um, what we notice, uh, what we've noticed with GAIN is very much that the female role model piece is so important, because if young women can't see women in finance and relate to them, they, they, how can they see themselves in that career? So we sort of say, if you can't see her, you can't be her. Um, and it's so crucial that being able to see women working in the industry and then being able to tell their journey and how they got there and the experiences they're having. Um, finance can seem quite a scary sector to a lot of young people. And really a lot about what we do again with our events that we put on and sort of our panel sessions online and things is sort of about humanizing it a bit and having a sort of series of women speaking about how they got into the industry, what they found their challenges, what the great things are about their jobs. But they are human and they're very normal and they're really nice people. And I think that comes across in a lot of these events. And it starts to students to start realizing actually I can relate to that and I can see myself being there now. So, um, it, yeah, that that whole sort of area is difficult. I mean, the other thing is students all think they have to be studying maths or finance in order to get in. And that's simply not the case. So just to give you um, some idea in terms of the applicants for our programs, about half are doing maths, finance, economics. A good quarter are doing arts sub subjects and a good quarter are doing sort of more science or engineering subjects. So there is a real spread and companies are really looking for that diversity of background as well. They're not, not just looking for the straight mass economics students all the time. And you, your summer program that you do, like a summer internship mm. um, applications, I think are, are that, is open now. Is that right? It's open now. Yes. So do apply if you're interested. So essentially what it is, it's an internship program, a summer internship program, and it's open to penultimate and final year undergrads and masters, MBA students and recent graduates. Um, and we have for next year, so we're recruiting now for next summer, um, and we have 225 odd places available to, um, to go. So we've got over 120 firms participating. Um, so yes, you apply to the programme as a whole, and then you get allocated out to a firm, um, and then it, the application process and the assessment happens in November, and then decisions are made and offers are made in December. So you sort of know before Christmas whether you've got a place. Um, and then we have a, a quite extensive training programme that we put all the successful interns on, and that covers everything, you know, all the Excel, the financial modelling, cash flow analysis, all of that stuff is covered, and a whole load of soft skills things as well. Um, and then we have, you, we allocate you to a mentor, so somebody from our network. So we have a network now of over a thousand um, volunteers, so these are all industry investment professionals, um, and they mentor you for that three month period. So before your internship and then during your internship as well as a sort of extra support, if you like, um, somebody to ask questions of if you don't want to go to your the company that you're interning with. Yeah, it's amazing because you said about at the beginning of the conversation mentors. But a question I always get from students is like, how do, how do I acquire a mentor? Seems very yeah. difficult, but it seems like you've got this network already. Um, yeah, to, we have this have. amazing network. So we basically allocate mentors to all of our programs. So there's the internship program, which is sort of the big flagship program. Before that, we do an insight program, and that's for first year undergraduates. And that's a 12 week program, which is sort of an introduction to investment. You learn how to do a stock pitch. You, we have a little virtual portfolio investment competition, um, and it culminates in like insight days with firms um, over the Easter break and you get allocated a mentor. And then we also have an ambassador program. So um, students at university can apply to be ambassadors um, for the academic year. And they have all sorts of other things going on, but one of the other parts is that they get allocated a mentor as well for that, for that period. So yeah, mentoring is really, really important. And it's not just women who mentor. We also have a lot of men signed up in our network as well, and they do mentor. Um, but it, it's really valuable to get that um, understanding of the industry or different aspects of the industry. So we literally cover everything from private equity, venture capital, through to hedge funds, asset managers, allocators, right through to wealth management. 
So there's lots of different areas. So depending on what you're interested on, interested in, sorry, then you'll get allocated a mentor according to that. Mm. Look, that sounds sounds amazing. And um, what I'll do is uh, anyone who's listening to this, I'm going to put some links in the show notes. So if you want to click through to find some information about any of what's just been described by Tanya, you can just go there. But Tanya, one thing to kind of wrap up that I always ask people in conversations that I have is if you could think back to a particular challenging point in your career. So it could have been right at the beginning, could have been later on, and you could go back your current self to yourself in that moment. What would be like a word of advice you would give? Oh, gosh. Um, (laughs) I guess the advice I would give would be to take control of my career a bit better. So I, and I suspect I'm not the only one, um, I think it's quite sort of, a lot of women tend to do this, is you're at school, you think I work hard, do a good job, you know, I just get rewarded and it'll all just flow. And, you know, I'll just move on from the next stage, the next stage, the next stage. Mm. But actually you do have to structure, you think about what it is that you really want and maneuver your way through to that point because nobody else is going to do it for you. Um, So you you have to really think hard about what it is that you're good at, what it is that you like and where you want to end up being and think about moving your career in that direction and networking with people in the direction that you want to go in. Because if you leave it up to everybody else, Mm -hmm then it's never going to end up being in the end the way you want to go. So it's it's really important to think hard about the, your career trajectory and, and and how you're going to get there. Oh, fantastic advice. And um, is it okay if I was to put your LinkedIn as well on the please show? Please do. Notes? Yeah, no, please <laughs> reach out, connect. Um, and, you know, very happy to connect with anybody on this topic. Yeah. Cool. All right. And I, and I know for sure we've had many of the, the Amplify alumni who've, who've been ambassadors and worked very closely with Gain. They've only said amazing things. So I'd highly encourage everyone to, um, to click and, and catch um, that link and have a look. But Tanya, look, thank you very much for your time. Uh, really appreciate yeah. it. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing. Um, I, I think you just had your third anniversary. Is that right? Our third birthday, yes, yes, it's very exciting. Yeah, so um, yes, we had all our um, the companies that we're involved with, and some of the students who gone through the whole process have, were there as well. And yeah, it was it was a really fun evening. And I think you know we've over a thousand volunteers. I've mentioned now we've reached over fifteen thousand students in three years through our events and programs. Um, and the ambition is just to keep growing it more. You know, reach students across the whole country um so yes if you're interested do have a look at our website and get involved i mean all the events and everything is free so um please just do sign up and you can receive our newsletter if you sign up for that um and that will just basically tell you about everything that's coming up that you can get involved with okay cool well look the amazing mission absolutely proud to be working with you on uh, on certain events and so forth and uh We'll speak again soon. Thanks very much, Tanya. Thank you.